Crafters. It's me, Jen Evers, with Koality Crafts. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad that this collaboration has brought you to this point. There's going to be other people to look at, and we're going to show you a lot of different, like, autumn and fall type projects. And today what I'm going to do is something that is, no, not new, but I'm going to give you tips and tricks on how to use shrinky dink paper or shrink plastic or however you guys call it in your home. Um, I am going to do step by step. I'm going to start out with showing you um, the items that you would need to do it. Then I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm definitely not going to skip out on the part where you shrink it and you, duh, you freak out because you think it's not going to land. It's not going to level out. Um, so I'll show you how I level mine out and then um, we'll build a little project together. And you should probably have gotten a sneak peek in the, um, in the beginning on the thumbnail. So here are some of the things that you're going to need to put this together. First of all, some shrink plastic or plastic um, shrinky dink material, whatever you call it. And I've got a piece of paper here or a piece of that here. It is rather sharp. So you want to be careful that if you are cutting out um, different kind of shapes, maybe put a little curved edge on it. And I'll show you in a minute just why that's important. Another thing would be something to color it with it. Uh, because it is a non-porous surface, you're going to want to make sure to have something like an alcohol or permanent ink marker. I'm going to use one of these today to smash mine down. It's just a silicone, um, what do you call these, scrapers, just so that I don't get, I don't burn my fingers while I'm doing this. Um, a piece of, or a set of scissors to cut out your little pieces. I'm going to use uh, a little bottle today, but you don't have to. I'll give you other ideas on what you can use. You're definitely going to want a hole punch. I'll explain a little bit why that's important. And then you want to have something with a sharp point that's small, relatively small, to put this together at the end. And then I'm just going to use um, some random other things, like I'm going to put in some string. And I'm going to use the medicine bo bottle for mine, but you can make yours into jewelry. It's all it's all up to you. Um, and I think that's about it to get going. And there'll be other odds and ends that I use that um, you'll catch along the way. So I know that I skipped the beginning major things, but I figured if you are a stamper or a creator, you probably already have this nailed down. So I'm just going to walk you through it. I'm using Stamper Anonymous Pressed Foilage Set. It has all these awesome little leaves to it. Um, we'll leave a link down below if you want to purchase that one through our store. And then I have... This is the one I'm going to use. So I already have one printed out, stamped out, if you will, with stays on. Because it's non-porous, again, you have to make sure that you're using something permanent. So an archival ink or a stays on works the best. I'm using stays on jet black ink. I put it on my stamp, and then I stamped it down on the shrink, shrinky dink or shrink wrap um, material. Now, when you do that, you want to make sure that you go straight down. Make sure you press on all sides and then bring it back up as straight as you can. You don't want to wiggle it around so it doesn't smear. Okay, so now that I've got that done, plus you want to give that just a minute to dry because you don't want um, all that coming off. So what I do is I figure out, okay, this is the side that I stamped on. It's no longer tacky, but it may be. This is the smooth side. We're going to go ahead and color on the smooth side, not the tacky part where we stamp. So we're actually going to stamp it and then flip it over. That's the side we're going to color. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I colored mine. I, I actually held mine above a white space, like a white card. So as I'm coloring, I can see what I'm coloring. That's your best bet. If it's still a little bit tacky and you're in a hurry, you can color by just hanging onto it in the air and just going like that. If it's a little bit tacky still, you might want to put it down on here. Just be careful that you don't let it stick to your material, your paper underneath. So I kind of like to hold mine up. Now I'm going to do yellow, and I want to show you the difference between these two that are already done that we're going to use in our project. see if we can get that to clump come close up let me see if I if I just use my hand that'll work out better there it is so do you see how dark that green is it's gonna come out darker than what you think because it's gonna shrink so all of that color you put on is gonna all squash together this one I did in green yellow and red and even though it's pretty 
the um, dark green that I added, all these little spaces right here, almost makes it look like you can't see through it. So the red and the yellow, I think, turned out really well. The darker green was just too dark. So I want one that's going to be kind of in the middle. So this one we're going to actually color in yellow. And I'm using a Copic marker in the color Y19. It's called Napoli Yellow. So I'm just going to pull off my cap. I'm going to hold it above there. And depending on how you want yours, if you're going to cut it really close to the edge, you can just scribble. But um, if you're going to make an outline, you might want to try to, you know, be inside the line. So what I'm going to do is, and you'll be able to hear it squeaking a little bit, I'm going to try to stay in the line only because when I do mine, I feel you, I feel you can see it better this way if I hold it up. Um, I'm going to go inside the lines, try to stay in. I'm not going to be perfect, but because when I do this one, um, I'm not going to cut directly on the line. And I'll tell you why, because I did this one first and I made those sharp lines and this is pointy, you guys, it's sharp. So you're not going to want to give that to a young child on a necklace or a bracelet. If you're going to do that, make sure that you have rounded edges. And I think this all yellow one will look really nice. If you make one, and just know, you know, it's going to shrink down because here is this leaf right here, the green one, started out that big. So it goes quite a bit smaller. So you want some big stamps for this too. I think this might make a really dark yellow. It's going to look like this one because that's the same color I did. But I can see the lines through it, so I think I'll be happy with that color. That's that's why that is. The other thing I said that I would um, give you a tip on and explain a little bit further are the holes. You don't have to do holes if you're just going to put it on a project or maybe, you know, glue it back to back on a ring or a necklace or something like that. But if you're not doing that, if you're going to hang it on something, you're going to need a hole. And because everything shrinks, including the hole, you can do um, the regular hole punch, just like you had in school, just the regular round hole punch. This will work. It will break it down to that size hole, right? Now, the other thing, right before we start doing this one, because I'm going to cut around it and I'm going to put my hole in, um, I decided on this one to have, whoops, I decided on this one to have the leaf um, twig right there off the edge of it. And this one I decided not to. I just removed it completely. That's a personal choice and they all turn out really cool. Um, but you want to make your hole and then when you're uh, drying it or <laughs> shrinking it, you want to make sure you have something pointy like this that's going to go in that hole. Because as it shrinks, if you're using something bigger, as it shrinks, it's going to shrink around that thing and it's going to get stuck on there. So you don't, you want to make sure you have something really small and I'll show you that. I'm not going to use um, super pointy. I'm going to leave the stem on, but I'm not going to use the super pointy parts. I'm just going to go around this, kind of edging around it, and I'll show you in a second exactly what I'm doing. Making it curved. Do you see the curves? Because I don't want that really sharp point that I had on the other one that I made. Hope you guys don't mind videos where I show every step. Um, I don't really want to speed this up, but at the same time, um, I tried to you know, do a couple of things to speed it up so that you're not watching a lot of content. I know you're. it's always tempting to, to jump into one of these festivals type things, collaborations, and you maybe get bogged down after you watch a few of them. So I'm trying to make it relatively quick. So there is my stem and my uh, leaf. I'm gonna go ahead and make my whole somewhere around there, like straight up from the bottom. That's as far as I can go in. So, boom, that's where my hole is going to be. And there it is. Okay. So this is going to be the hard part, trying to get this so that you guys can see what's going on, but also making sure that I flatten this out as it goes. And trust me, it's going to look like it's never going to come back out, but it will. So it's going to, this is going to be the noisy part. Um, I may speed it up after a while, I'm not sure, but I wanted you to see the process. So here we go.
I'm just holding that down with my spatula, letting it cool for just a little bit because I want it to be relatively flat. Although if you don't want it to be flat, you can heat it up some more and manipulate it the way you want. So this one's not going to be super flat. I like how this one turned out, you know, kind of the shape that a natural leaves would go. And then this one that I did earlier, that one also almost made like a bowl of a leaf, but it turned out super cool. Just so cool. All right, so I'm going to take that off of there. It will stay hot for quite some time, so just handle it gently. And there's my last one. And I love that it's yellow because look at all the detail you can see. So cool! So I'm going to take just a quick pause here. We're going to put the whole thing together. All right, guys, so this is going to be the coolest part. We're going to put this all together, right? So I decided, wouldn't it be cool if we put some candy in here? I mean, you could use this as a fall set out. Maybe you don't see everybody for every holiday, so maybe you want to just send over um, something that's got a little treat in for the kids and stuff. So I'm going to put some little snicker bars in this one. I think I can fit three. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to just close the lid so you'll be able to see them in there. And then for the top, I just punch, and it depends on what size... Um, of these little bottles that you have. I, I get tons of these because I'm on tons of medications, but sometimes people are just willing to throw them out. So you can just ask around. This is about a one and a half inch. And I did a little sparkly paper there. One of those sparkly papers where when you rub it, nothing comes off. So you don't have to worry about glitter getting everyone. Cause some people don't like glitter, right? <laughs> I know that's true. Some people are like, no, don't do glitter. All right. And I'm going to do some little glue dots here. To make sure that stays on this is slightly bigger than the size of the jar but uh, my my next smallest one didn't fit at all and it didn't cover up the writing that's the whole point right get, get rid of that ugly writing so there we've got a nice fun little shiny top and then i have glitter um glitter sequins not glitter sequins gold sequins uh for the end but what i really wanted to do was put these guys on and I hope this totally fits in there it should yeah a couple of these together and then this last one and we're gonna hang this around the top if you want them to dangle more which I thought might be fun for them to dangle more use a thinner one but I thought if I put these on the edge here and tied them on, yeah, it's not my favorite, but you can use anything you want. So here what I'm thinking, let's pop that off of there. I've got more, like a real thin one, or if you have um, some real smaller ones, like some baker's twine like this, if you want to get into the holiday season and put on the um, red and green or the brown or what have you. I'm going to go ahead and just grab some of this thinner stuff that I have in here. I just think this will look really cute. And hopefully I've got enough to make it go all the way around and tie it a couple of times. So let's try this one. These should hang down a little bit better than the other ones did. We'll see. So all I'm doing is just threading these on here. And you don't have to use three. Maybe you only want to use one. But like you can, if you use one, you can make it so that you can have necklaces or bracelets. So here, oh, it kind of makes a neat little sound too. Anyway, necklaces, you could tie them on, make them for little bracelets. Whatever you want to do, little round ones look really cool too. So this one's going to go around the edge. I'm going to let them dangle just a little bit. Whoops might help for me to do one little glue dot on here to, to just sustain it. Let's try that. Just have fun with it. Like, I did not perfect this before I came on with you guys. I just thought, you know, this will be a fun little thing. Not too hard. And then that little glue dot will just hold it there until I can get this tied on. You can also put wet glue or your ATG or something um, double-sided around that side as well however you want that to go i'm going to try to keep it on the big side i'm going to pop 
pull this down tight. You might want to put another little uh, glue dot here too to make sure everything stays in place. And then you've got those cute little, all those cute little leaves hanging off the edge. And then they can decide to do something too if they want with it. You can personalize it, put their names or their initials on the top. You can decorate it with sequins and stuff around the edges. You could maybe even just put one on the top if you like. I just think that is really cute. You could put paper around the edge if you don't want them to see the snack right away. Maybe you want to put some more of that um, glitter one. But anyway, everyone, everyone has their own stash, their own style, their own color preference. So I'm going to leave the rest of it up to you, but I think this is super cute because there's only there's not just one thing to do with the shrinky dinks once you have them cut down, right? You can do all sorts of stuff. So that's my inspiration for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed this fall idea because you can use it all year round for everything. You can use birthdays. You can do um, Thanksgiving and put a little note in there about why you're thankful for your family and everything that you have. Um, give it to friends. Send it to friends, you know, that you just don't see very often, but you still really appreciate having in your life. And... I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you enjoy the Creative Arts Collaboration um, setting up this Love Fall 2019. I guess we could call it a series. It's actually, um, I'm reading my cue card because I can never remember it all, a free video arts festival just for you. So I hope that you'll go on to watch all the other ones. And I can't wait to see you guys next video.